They were all innocent children. A son. A brother. Lives with limitless possibilities ahead of them. But what these boys would grow up to become, brutal killers. Could their brains have provided a roadmap to the sickness that would consume them? Every mean, vicious psychopath, once upon a time, one that was an innocent young baby. For some people, the die are cast early in life. Recent research suggests that psychopathy is evidenced in the brain and that those who wind up killing over and over may have been born to do so. It's only recently with the advent of molecular genetics and brain imaging techniques that we've been able to peer into the minds of murderers really for the first time. We began our exploration into the inner workings of the brain along a remote highway in Texas headed for death row where I sat down with a 45-year-old man who could arguably have one of the baddest brains in America. The first time I did a shot of dope, it was the best feeling I ever had in my life. And the first time I killed somebody, it was such a rush. And it was just like that shot of dope. Every time I did it, it was that rush again and I started chasing that high. Tommy Lynn Sells was once a little boy growing up in St. Louis, but around the age of 14, he says he became addicted to killing. How many people have you killed? Lord, I don't know. I, I don't know. 10? Yeah. 20? Probably. 30? It's up there. 50? But see, I'm not Billy the Kid making notches on, on my, my holster, so I know it's been a lot. Psychopaths are individuals who lack conscience, they lack remorse, they lack guilt. That's one of the reasons why they terrorize society so much. Sells is on death row for one murder, but he's linked to at least 17 more. The drifter's vagrant lifestyle helped him elude police for nearly 15 years as victims turned up from coast to coast. I am hatred. When you look at me, you look at hate. When I look at you, I look at hate? When you look at me, you know what hate is. I don't know what love is. Two words I don't like to use is love and sorry because I'm about hate. His methods for killing were as random as the people he targeted. He raped many before cutting their throats or beating them, stabbing others and strangling some. Vicious cycle. I couldn't help but be grateful for the glass between us. I don't have no feelings. No more. No emotion. No. They showed much poor. Dr. Adrian Rain has studied the brains of people scientifically determined to be psychopaths. One of the key differences that we find in the brains of psychopaths is that there's a structural impairment to a part of the brain called the amygdala. This is a part of the brain very much involved in the generation of emotion. It was structurally deformed in the psychopaths. And I like to watch the eyes fade, the pupil fade. What do you like about that? It, it's just like setting their soul free. They just don't have those normal um, feelings of revulsion and disgust. They are the last images of the Dardeen family. One sadistic crime cells confess to shows the callous, unemotional disregard for human life typical of psychopaths. A 30-year-old mother, seven and a half months pregnant at home with her three-year-old son, both bludgeoned to death. What are you thinking and feeling when you kill someone? It's just like that drug. I'm after that drug again. I, I don't have an on and off switch. I'm just after that drug. I'm after that feeling. During the beating, Eileen Dardeen went into spontaneous labor, giving birth to a daughter who investigators believed to be alive at the time. The new baby, was also beaten to death, and the body of Dardine's husband turned up a day later, shot three times in the head. 
I wonder if you could just tell me what happened as you were killing her. Did she, did she give birth to a baby? You know, you push and you love. I'm sorry. Let's, let's, not get, let's not get into blood and guts, because cause that's what you're trying to get into. Sells blames much of his murderous rage on sexual abuse he says he suffered as a child. You also killed children. I some get killed, yes. Now, why would that happen? I didn't want them to live through the pain I lived through. It's biology plus environment. It's biology coming together with environmental insults which raise the odds of an individual becoming a violent criminal offender. I tried to get in this door right here. Two days after his final murder, Tommy Lynn Sells walks police through the crime scene. And I opened the window all the way up, well, about like this. Uh -huh. And I found this. Okay. We kind of stayed up a little later and we got in a little fight about where we were all going to sleep. We laid there and talked a bit. Um, we talked about, at the time, like Britney Spears and NSYNC. Crystal Searles, 10 years old at the time, was sleeping over at her friend Katie Harris's. A decade later, that night is still fresh in her memory. I woke up startled a little bit and out of nowhere and I was kind of confused um, to a loud noise. I woke this girl up. Her friend Katie was asleep on the bottom bunk. I, I cut her bra. I kind of just like leaned my head up a little bit and I could see that there was this scary old, older man that I'd never seen before. I stabbed her here and then she like jumped back and then, then I cut her like, like this right here. And he had a hand on her mouth and the knife on her neck and she's looking at me and he just cut her throat and she fell to the ground. And she fell down right here. I heard Katie at the bottom of the bed, on, or on the floor at the bottom of the bunk bed, she was like gasping for air and choking, like she couldn't breathe. Thirteen-year-old Katie Harris lay dying on the floor. He was about to shut off the light and he looked one last time and he noticed that I was there. And he didn't hesitate at all. I mean, just shut the door, came right back towards me with the knife. And I walked over here and I went like this. The only thing that he said is, move your hands, because I had him up here, and uh, he reached over the top bunk and cut my, cut my neck. Cells sliced Crystal's neck, severing her windpipe and grazing her carotid artery. I am very sure he thought he killed me. Crystal Searles identified Tommy Lynn Sells as her assailant and her friend's killer, putting an end to his homicidal spree. Do you remember the little girl who survived? Uh, yes. There's not a day I, that goes by that I don't think about her. What did you do to her, sir? Her neck was cut. How did you do that? With a knife. Do you have anything to say to her, the little girl who survived? I guess you'll relay this message too. Uh. It's very difficult to control a psychopath. They're the person in control. And in, in fact, in an interview, psychopaths tend to take control of the interviewing. What's your name? Martin. Martin? Yes. Can I call you Tommy? Oh, without a doubt. I don't think she really wants to hear what I get to say. What did you see in his eyes? To be honest, he seemed blank. I mean, there was no emotion. It wasn't hard for him. He, all he would say is, move your hands. You know, it was just, I mean, after what I'd seen him do, he had no emotion in his eyes. That emptiness evident as we spoke. So what if I called you something that you didn't like? And you'd think about killing me? Well, if we was in a fight and, you know, get your head down in the concrete, then... You know, so be it, but... What happens when my head goes down to the concrete? Well, what do you think happens? It cracks like a coconut. And then what happens? You die. 